This is going to be a short tutorial on setting up Marvin Sketch to draw reaction mechanisms. I'm going to go over a couple of details in setting up the menus so that you can draw the structures a little bit more easily. Uh, one of the things that people often have problems with is the toolbars. They don't know how to uh, customize them and if you can customize the toolbar there's a lot of things that you can do that normally uh, would be a bunch of menus to get through. So first of all I'm going to go through my preferences and I'm going to uh, go to structure and I'm going to get rid of automatic lone pair calculation. Uh, that's so I can draw lone pairs when I do Lewis structures and do mechanisms. Hit OK there and then I'm going to go into view and toolbars area. I'm going to go to um, customize down here so you see that what I did, cancel that and go back. I went through view and editor style. I have Marvin. If you do Marvin V5.0, that's the older version of Marvin Sketch. If you're familiar with uh, Isis or ChemDraw, there's a couple of other uh, mo menu modes that are more like ChemDraw, for example. <clears throat> Most of you probably haven't done that, so we're going to go back to customize. And you'll notice there's menus, there's pop-ups, there's toolbars, there's a key map so you can uh, remap your keys to do particular, uh, keyboard keys to do particular things. We're not going to do any of that. And what we'll do is we'll create a new toolbar and we'll just call it personal. And so in that toolbar what you'll want to add is uh, tools that will be good for uh, helping you draw reaction mechanisms. And so what I'm going to do is click the add and then go down to the graphic and we're going to add a one electron and a two electron. You'll notice up here in the left hand corner uh, there's two arrows that have appeared for a radical reaction, one, re one electron mechanisms and two electron mechanisms. And then we're also going to go into the lone pair and you can actually uh, do whatever you want here but um, I like to choose the number of lone pairs I'm going to show and then um, click a button and then have that many lone pairs show up but you could also increase uh, the number of lone pairs. So I'm just going to add the common uh, lone pair groupings 1 through 4. Um, and then I'm going to also insert a radical so that um, I'm able to uh, easily uh, draw one electron since probably if you're watching this video you're having to deal with radical reaction mechanisms by now. And we'll close this and we'll hit OK. So now what we want to do is we want to draw a uh, reaction mechanism. And we're going to do the uh, bromination of uh, two butanol substitution reaction uh, using HBr. And what I normally do is I open up a new window. And so now I will have two Marvin sketch windows. Let me go back to this original one and uh, scale it down to size. And I also have a Word document open, so let me bring that over here just so you can see what I'm doing. So I want 2-butanol, so I'm going to grab 2-butanol over here. You could either, you can draw 2-butanol, it's very easily just to go like this. Now I've got my four carbons, draw a bond, you know that's not 2-butanol of course, but if you put your mouse at this position and type O, it will convert that to an O or an OCH3, we want OH, so I hit Type, I type the letter O and you'll notice all the options that come up on the left hand side of the screen for the different things that it could be but that's 2-butanol. So now the other way that you can do it though which is um, a lot of people find really neat and I, I think it is very neat. I'll delete that. I just hit delete to delete it. Um, I just copy 2-butanol and I paste it into a document and there's 2-butanol. Now if you don't like the orientation you can use the select tool, highlight the structure and twist it. Now we're going to make 2-bromobutane out of this. Oops. So if I take that and drag it in here, look, notice what happened. Um, oops. 
shouldn't have done it like that. Let me do it. Um, I, there we go. Uh, kind of zipped off the screen. That's going to be my product in the reaction. So you can just take this and drag it or copy it. I think it's easier to copy. Go to the document and paste it. And then you can paste the structure wherever you like. Okay. Okay. So you can drag it over. You can copy and paste it over. And you can draw it as many times as you want. Okay. Control Z and do all that. Go back to this. So I have one reactant, I have one product. You notice how I highlight it and there's a box in the middle here. If I slide off the box and it makes that like uh, saw star shape, you can spin the molecule. I notice the letters always reorient so that they're uh, horizontal with the screen. So there are my two structures. I need to swap my reactant and my... Pr uh, oh no, that's right. Okay, go like this. And now I want to draw the reaction mechanism. There's a couple ways you can do that. I'm going to copy HBr and paste it. I think I copied it. There we go. Um, but that's not good for a mechanism because I'll need a bond. So I'll click over here and I'll draw a line out like that. That's a CH3. I'm just going to replace it with an H by typing the letter H. Now when you type the letter H, you have to be highlighted over the letter. Okay, so now... I'm going to draw my reaction mechanism. I'm going to put my H here for my alcohol, and then I'm going to draw two lone pairs. So there's my lone pairs. I'll draw my two lone pairs. And now what you need is reaction arrows. So it's a two-headed arrow from this atom to that atom. Um, one of the things I haven't quite figured out from Marvin's sketch oops, is how to get it to... Um, not draw across the structure. See how it's doing that? Uh, you might also just try doing this. Again. But again, it seems to want to draw it has its own mind. I think maybe I can grab it and pull it, but it never quite seems to work out right. So, anyways, a little trick uh, playing around with it. You can trick it into looking okay. And then uh, you get another arrow from here to here. And if you want to make the loop bigger, you can go like that. There's a bunch of things that you can do. Okay, so let me move my product out of the way. I'm going to have to draw an intermediate structure. Copy this. I'm going to, have to paste it over here. Uh, my intermediate structure is going to have a plus sign on it. So what I'll do is I'll hit plus on the keyboard and click here. And that's the protonated uh, alcohol. And I can put a BR ion over on the other side um, by typing BR and then minus and then clicking on the BR. There's the bromide. If you want the lone pairs on there, you can draw all the lone pairs. Uh, one of the unfortunate things is the uh, negative sign is extremely small when you do it like this. A couple of reaction arrows you can use. If you use that reaction arrow, the one right off the screen here, notice how I put plus signs in front, in between here and here, which is really what you want, but it also puts a plus sign here. Uh, it's kind of annoying, actually, because when you're drawing a reaction mechanism, you don't necessarily want plus signs everywhere. So we're going to delete that. I'm going to hit delete and then click on it. And that's the, notice how it goes to the eraser. So what I'm going to use is a different arrow. I'm just going to use a single arrow. And I think that's fine for reaction mechanisms uh, because, uh, in reality, you don't often put plus signs in reaction mechanisms. Now I'm going to break this bond, so I'm going to get my two-headed reaction arrow. Go from there to there. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. Draw another uh, single reaction arrow. That's this one here, from here to here. Now you notice I can't get it to go exactly where I want, just draw it near where you want and then you can um, move the end a little bit more refined. 
Uh, this is still my product, so I'll move that over here. But I'm going to copy it and paste this over here. And then I'm going to hit my delete button so I can delete the BR. And I'm going to put a positive sign next to it because it's now carbocation. So I hit the plus sign on my keyboard. I click there. That's my carbocation. Uh, if you want to have the hydrogen drawn, again, you would just put another bond and hit H. And now I have my bromide ion, which I want to copy over. So I'm going to copy it, Control C, and paste it over here. And then I can have a single reaction or a reaction arrow go from here to here. Again, I don't know why it does this to me, but it seems to like, doesn't seem to care where the arrow actually travels. Might be better if I do it like this and drag this guy over here. Looks better that way anyways. And that gives me my product, but I still need a single reaction arrow to go like this. Okay. So there's a quick reaction uh, arrow. A couple of other cool tools in Marvin Sketch. Um, let me open up my second window, which I often keep open. Uh, in case I want to modify something and I don't want to screw up my original drawing, I can modify it on a second window. Um, if you go to Structure and... Um, name to structure, you can type in, for example, 2-butanol, and then use a semicolon and type in 2-bromobutane, uh, maybe a semicolon and uh, hydrogen br bromide, and import that. And that will also, it's another way of getting structures brought into a diagram. The only drawback to that is when you go back over name to structure, and let's say you try to type in, um, let's say, acetone, and you hit import, it actually overwrites the original document, so those other structures are no longer there. So it's a nice way to have a scratch pad, because you can copy this over from one to another. So let's say you did the reaction acetone, which in this case you wouldn't do that, but if you did, you could draw it like that. Marvin Sketch is pretty versatile. I'm not sure if it'll do this for me, but let's try it. Dimethyl sulfoxide. That's another, you know, anyways, you get the idea. You can type a bunch of different stuff in and have it put in its place. Oops. Uh, let me delete that. There we go. Okay, um, now a couple other things. Let's go back to this window. Let me draw um, three, oops, I'm going to draw three pentanone. Hang on. Get the name, structure, name to structure, three pentanone. Import that. Let's say you wanted the NMR for that. You can go to Calculations, NMR, and you can do, for example, HNMR prediction. And it's actually popped up on a, another screen that I have. There's the HNMR prediction, and you can zoom into an area to take a better look at it. You can also do a number of options. This is set up as a 60 megahertz. That's the kind of instrument we have in the lab. But let's say you've got a gigahertz you could do that. You can see how much uh, better resolved those peaks are. If you zoom in to these, you still have all the peaks with the same amount of separation, but because the resolution of the higher frequency instruments is so much greater, you can actually see a lot more uh, types of hydrogens in a spectrum this way. You can also have it, instead of being in parts per million, you could actually look at the number of hertz. Another one would be to uh, select all and go to structure and go structure to name and you can place the IUPAC name on here. And you'll notice that if I uh, replace groups on the name, it actually renames it on the fly. Another thing that you can do, let me delete that name. I click delete, by the way, and then press on the name. Um, 
you can also structure it a name. You can generate a single name um, and 1,3-dichloroacetone is a common traditional name or you could do the preferred IUPAC name which is 1,3-dichloropropanone, propantuone. Okay, so number of handy, oh and you can actually copy these if you just select them, control C. Let me open up my Word document again, paste that in and it saves the actual uh, IUPAC name or traditional uh, common name. So there's a number of other things that you can do. Um, you should probably check out some of these things yourself. I won't, I won't take the time to do all of them. There's a, let's say you draw a structure. And, I didn't draw any structure, so let me delete this. Let me draw some structures and draw them really badly. All right. There's my structure, and uh, I just realized suddenly how horrible it looks. You can go to structure, and you can clean 2D, and you can hit Control 2, and Control 2 literally redraws the structures that are on the screen in a better format. You can also clean in 3D. Uh, that's just a little trickier because when you're cleaning in 3D, that's a three-dimensional view of it. Uh, I think I turned the 3D tools off. So we're going to clean that up. And then see if I can rotate this in 3D. No, I don't think I'll be able to do it. Another nice thing that you can do um, is view this in Marvin space. And there's the Marvin space. That's a two-dimensional. Well, let me clean it in 3D, and then we'll go into Marvin space. And that's the three-dimensional. Oh, sorry. And this is the three-dimensional cleaned up drawing which is clearly more appropriate if you're trying to show something in three dimensions and if you're trying to show something in two dimensions you probably aren't going to be using Marvin's space. So I hope that helps you in your structure drawing and uh, if you have any questions just feel free to contact me.